no try this some <coughs> so um project was it a project <laughs> you have to, you need um yeah. Yeah. hello everyone and welcome back to my youtube channel my name is Nesso and if you're a returning subscriber thank you very much for, for subscribing and if you're new to my channel please kindly subscribe as this helps me grow my youtube so today's video will be all about getting admission to canadian schools i'll be talking about how you can search for schools how you can apply to schools uh, what to look out while applying to schools and all that some of you might find this video helpful as this is a highly requested video i'm filming this video currently when they are still counting the election vote so i don't know what what the outcome of the vote might turn out to be if the outcome turns out to make you think about like relocating to canada or trying to like start your study route in canada so you might find this video helpful so before i get started into the video one thing i would like you guys to note is that this whole process takes time i would tell you to like probably give yourself a one year period from applying to schools to when you finally land in Canada because that's how long it took me to finally get to where I am at this moment. Please have patience. Make sure that you have like the financial needs or the financial help that you have available. Another thing I would like you guys to note is that you can actually do this application by yourself, right? You don't need to have an agent. You don't need an agent to do it for you. From your um, applying to schools to applying for your study visa, you can actually do it by yourself if you dedicate specific time into your research and application and finding out the requirements and that is what I did I did my application by myself I applied to schools by myself I did my, my study visa application by myself I didn't use an agent and you can actually do it by yourself and if you are looking to outsourcing probably you don't have the time or you whatever your reason might be i encourage you to research on your own and to make sure that the agent that you're using is a credible agent you do your own research as well and not totally depend on your agent because i've heard some funny stories out there some of them because of like misrepresentation they had to like get like five year ban and um, some scary stories out there so i wouldn't want you to be one of those people so please in as much as you're using an agent try to do your own research by yourself try to know that the documents that you're submitting are the right documents try to get an access to your account right whether it's your school application accounts or your IRCC application accounts make sure you have access to it the first step that you need to know while coming to Canada as an international student is research you have to do your research the key thing about this whole process is research if you don't know how to use google or you don't know how to use youtube or you don't know how to use the internet or you're someone that is all like oh i don't want my data to finish or you're trying to save your data and stuff the best investment that you can do for yourself while undergoing this process is investing on research buy data that will carry you throughout your research process. If you're someone like me that wants to like take another course that is different from the bachelor's degree that I have, you need to find out what course that you would want to study. And don't go and choose a course that you will not be able to get employment after, after spending this time and money in school. You have to choose a course that would be very relevant to you because the money that you're paying is like an investment so you have to make sure that you'll be able to get a return of that investment because that you're interested in search if it has like employability rate search if there are employers that are looking for that particular qualification or particular position to fill so you need to know all these things you can do a course that no one is interested in or no one uh, wants to employ or 
total waste of time after graduating and everything i end up not looking for a job um, i end up working like minimum wage jobs so you do your research make sure that the course that you're going to study has a high employability rate so now you've conducted your research on the courses and their employability rates in canada the next thing for, that you need to do is search on the schools that offer these courses you need to make sure that the school that you're applying to or you're interested in applying to is a designated learning institution these schools also make you eligible for postgraduate work permits postgraduate work permit a work permit that is given to you after your time studying in canada one thing you should note is that one year program gives you a one year postgraduate work permit a two year program gives you two years postgraduate work permit a three year program gives you two years postgraduate work permit so once you've decided the course that you're interested in studying and the school that you're interested in studying the next thing that you need to do is to apply to those schools one thing from my own experience what i did was i applied to three colleges which are seneca george brown and Dunham college right they were all in ontario and they all had the course i was interested in and by the way i'm studying computer programming what i did i went to seneca website went to george brown's website went to Dunham's website i searched if those three schools had the courses that i was interested in applying to i then compared the number of years their fees and the admission requirement. Admission requirement differs from school to school. Some of them, they might ask you to submit an essay. They might ask you to take a test. I've heard some, some for some people, they ask them to take like a mathematical test. Some people, they might require you to submit your portfolio or make a video or whatever. So you need to check the admission requirements for that course or for those courses before you apply usually schools have like application fees that you need to pay for them to like process your application Seneca usually have this like uh, admission waiver fee you don't need to like pay the hundred dollars application waiver fee is usually given to African countries to kind of encourage us to, like apply to Seneca I don't know if it's given to other countries so for Seneca I didn't pay any application fee but for Durham and for George brown i had to pay unfortunately i checked and i checked and there was no uh, discounts or any waiver fee like that but seneca did have so if you're interested in applying to seneca colleges to always look out for their waiver fee a thing that i wanted to note as well is to know your budget while searching for schools and their courses if you go to the course page on the school website you'll be able to see the fee what you're required to pay for that program it differs from program to program some programs their fees they are usually really high and you see some programs that their fees are like not low i wouldn't say like low low because well no international student pays like <laughs> low fees but you could see like some find something that it's towards the lower end for example cost a in seneca might be like 20k and cost a in george brown might be like 25k and cost a in Durham might be like 15k so the fees differ from schools as well as it differs from like programs as well so while searching for schools and colleges you don't need to limit your options to Ontario, right? There are other provinces that offer lesser school fees. Honestly, the application process was very easy. Like, I didn't expect it to be this easy, but for some reason, like, it was so easy, so seamless. Everything is like very clear on their website. So you just have to go to the website, follow the instructions, go under the international students drop down and follow the instructions. They will tell you how to apply. They will tell you the things that you're required. I did that search and they told me like I needed my wire. And I didn't even need IELTS. Most of the colleges, you don't need IELTS. Well, you have to do your research. Don't quote me. You have to do your research in order to find out because I don't know for other schools if it's required but for the schools I apply to, you don't need IELTS. Some of the documents that I submitted were my university certificate and my university transcript. Another document that is important is your WIEC certificate. If you have your WIEC or your NECO, you can submit both or you could submit one of them. 
birth certificate as well you also need to submit your passport so these are the five documents that you need to attach while submitting your application october 2021 was when i started searching for canadian schools to apply to i knew that that was a period when schools start accepting applications for the next year's september entry from September of the previous year, you need to already start looking to schools to know when they will start accepting application for the next year, September's academic year. I think by November 2021, I had already submitted my Seneca application. You have like three course choice that you need to do. You have like your first choice, second choice, and third choice. They give priority to the first choice. By December, January 2021, Seneca had given me an admission to their computer programming course. But at that time, I was still hesitant. I didn't want to like rush and accept my application at that moment. I still wanted to like apply to other schools and so I'll be able to have other options so i didn't accept the application right away i went on to apply to george brown to apply to Durham college when i finally got offers from george brown and Durham, so that was when i had to like compare the pros the cons the fees what are their co-op options and which one would i be able to commute there were so many things i had to consider while really making my final choice which was Seneca College. When I finally accepted the admission in Seneca, it took them like, I think two days or some days, I can't quite remember, before they now sent me an offer letter. Once you've done all that, you've gotten admission and you've made your school deposit, now it's time to apply for your study permit. I'll be talking about the study permit application in my next video. So thank you very much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next video where I'll be talking about the process I went through, documents I submitted and how long it took me before I got my approval from IRCC. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.